Good morning. I'm Dr. Norm, chair of the department, and I'm pleased to present to you the second set of um, young alums who have come from New York this year. And on this uh, session, we have Katie Class, who is merchandising coordinator for watches and jewelry at Louis Vuitton Americas. Rachel Ripley, Senior Supply Chain Associate at Phillips Van Heusen Corporation, and also from the same company, uh, Jerrica Leiby, Manager of Trim and Packaging. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to them. They each will have about 10 minutes to talk with you, and then we will open it up for Q&A. Hi, everyone. My name is Katie Class. I graduated in 2016, so it wasn't long ago, actually, that I was sitting in your seat. I want to be honest. The fashion industry is competitive, especially in New York. And internships are imperative to launching your career. That being said, the hard but honest truth is that many interns land these coveted roles from having a family connection or knowing someone in the industry or simply proximity, for example, the students who are going to school in the city. So how in the world does a girl from Minnesota who went to school in Missouri land internships in New York City and now work for one of the top companies in the luxury world? What I truly believe that is fundamental to my success is working hard, being resourceful, and relationships. So starting with resourcefulness and what you can do while in school. So I wanna stress the importance of Excel. Actually, I know you guys all probably hate that, but when I was applying to fashion business internships, a common daunting requirement was Excel. And I had zero experience. After my first internship, it became very apparent I needed more Excel. So the IT department here at Mizzou actually offered free courses, and I still believe that they do, so I took classes in my free time. So if you don't know how to make a pivot table or write a VLOOKUP, I recommend looking into classes. Another re, um, resourcefulness that I used was while at school was doing the YMA Fashion Scholarship Fund case study competition. This is a case study that going to MU gives you the opportunity to do so. Yes, it is very hard work, but if you do win, it is awesome. But if you don't win, it still is great business experience that is very relatable to real life work today. So another thing, while you, what you can do while being in school to be resourceful, is extracurricular organizations. I was a member of the ATAM organization here on campus, and this was something that I found very helpful because we went actually on business trips that you could qualify for. For example, we went to Chicago, and we got to meet with businesses and have an insight into their company and what their world was that they were doing day to day. Also, if you have the opportunity to take a leadership role within an organization, I recommend to do so, whether that is in ATAM, your sorority, or any other organization you may be a part of. I was the vice president of event planning for my sorority, and this not only taught me what a business was like to run, but also being how to manage your peers, and also just like again, how I said, how a business runs. If you're not in an extracurricular, I'd recommend trying to join something. So moving on to resourcefulness in, in internship and in your job. So how you get your first foot in the door is the hardest. But it's not the impossible. Don't blindly send 100 emails and apply to every internship you can. Be strategic. Yes, send 100 emails and apply to many internships, but don't reach out to just anyone. LinkedIn is your best friend. Use this amazing platform to creep. How many of you have an Instagram and know someone so well, but you have never met them? I'm sure many of you. Do the same with LinkedIn. 
I want to give an example of how I first got my internship at Chanel. I was going to school abroad in Paris for the semester, and I had wanted to stay the summer. I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I had started doing some creeping. I found a woman who was working at Chanel. She was from St. Louis, hint, hint, I was going to school in Missouri, and she was in the same sorority as I was in, but although at a different university, hint, hint, another similarity. Granted, my internship in Paris didn't end up working out, but after a phone interview, I ended up getting a job offer and I couldn't say no to Chanel, so I flew to New York that summer. My point is, being resourceful and doing a little digging can really pay off. Another point I want to add is persistence with your email. When I was interviewing with someone, they once told me when interns reach out to them for a job or an internship, they never respond to the first email they get. If they, they must follow up and be persistent and stick with it because they know then that that person will really want to get it. Also, when you're reaching out, I don't recommend saying, hi, can I get the job, basically. You know, we have these similarities. Is there a position available? What I recommend doing, what Addy actually mentioned, is asking them for 20 minutes of their time and ask for advice how they got to where they are today and basically ask if there's, they have any advice that they have to how to get an internship. They've once been there before and they know that it is hard. So moving on, once you're in your real world job or your internship, if you don't know something, use Google and search through documents that are available before running to your boss. Looking back at my very first internship, I asked way too many questions and needed confirmation that I was doing this or that correctly. Trust yourself. It's okay not to know everything, but have faith that you will have the capacity to figure out. You, that is absolutely key. What I recommend doing is if you are having a task and you don't know something, write it down and move on. I'm assuming that you'll probably have another question five minutes later. Also, when you are having a touch base or a meeting with your boss, always bring a notebook. This is a recommendation that a boss had told me at my first internship that I'll never forget. And people have actually pointed out to me and said, oh, it's great that you are ready and you're prepared. Even if you aren't writing anything down on the meeting, it shows that you care about what people, other people are talking about. And what you write down may actually answer one of your questions that you have. So I just want to quit, do a quick touch base on, again, resourcefulness. My first job moving to New York was the hardest, that very first year. I moved to New York without a job, but again, that proximity piece was key, and Addie mentioned it too, to be available ASAP and to be able to start as soon as possible. I was hired through an outside agency as a, for a two-month gig at Louis Vuitton to, for a high jewelry event. A few months go by, and they ended up offering me another position, but this time I was going to be hired directly through LVMH. However, I had to go through the interview process again and take an Excel test. I have to be honest with you, even after my free classes at Mizzou, I failed this test. However, I had built a great rapport with the team and they knew that I was gonna be hardworking and I could be a fast learner. Being resourceful though, I wanna to touch on that. I worked my weekends and tried to stay afloat and to keep up with the fast pace of the work. To say I didn't have a life is an understatement that first year. However, though, I used YouTube to teach myself more Excel. I asked questions from a fellow assistant who was an Excel guru. And although it was challenging and at some points I wanted to quit, I persevered and was determined to use resources and make it work. So these are just a few examples of how being resourceful and going above and beyond can make a large impact in your career. So now relationships. Throughout my career, relationships have proved to be extremely valuable. I don't want to bore you with stressing how important networking is because that is a given, but taking that a step further and cultivating true relationships. This is one of the many things that I believe the TAM program stressed really well and sets you up for success. So take advantage of all of the opportunities. So now that you've landed this internship at this coveted role, 
There's no time for coasting. I feel very strongly that every single person has something valuable that you can learn from. Get to know the mailman, get to know the office secretaries, get to know the front door man. And honestly, you never know, these people got hired for a reason. So building relationships beyond your immediate, your immediate team is very important, especially in your first week. It's very important if you were not introduced to someone to introduce yourself. Beyond that first week, it gets harder and more awkward if you didn't introduce yourself. So definitely introduce yourself, get out of your comfort zone because it will make a huge difference on your career. So within relationships, office politics is a real thing. So I just wanna say, don't be fake and don't talk badly about anyone. You never know who may be reaching out to you for a job next, because the fashion industry is a small world. So just quick wrapping up. What I truly believe, again, is fundamental to my success is working hard, being resourceful, and relationships. Every one of you are capable of anything in this room. I truly just want to thank the faculty for, for, for providing such a foundation to my career, and especially a quick shout out to Jamie Mestres, who was not only my advisor, but also my YMA mentor, for inviting me back here today to talk to our next industry leaders.